Welcome back to another edition of Jets Class. Thank you guys so much for joining. It's going to be a blast as always. We have so much on tap for today's episode. Uh, it looks like the Jets might have a nice little one-two punch in the backfield there with Braylon Allen and Brees Hall. Mike Williams made a huge play against the Tennessee Titans as he continues to work forward. Big, big game this Thursday night in prime time for the Jets against the Patriots. We're going to talk about why they cannot take that team lightly. But before we get to any of that, it's time for the takeoff and why you should be super optimistic about what the Jets offense is capable of doing this season because of what they're doing right now. This Jets offense has left a lot to be desired these first couple weeks of the season. Uh, meat on the bone, if you will. But what is so encouraging, and you saw this against the San Francisco 49ers, and you saw it at an increased level in week two against the Titans, is that for the first time in recent memory, maybe as long as I've been covering this team, which dates back to 2014, there is too much talent on this football team for them to be kept down by even the best defenses for four full quarter. Seriously, when was the last time you were able to say that? We know the offensive line, they're not totally playing as one just yet. Aaron Rodgers doesn't look completely back. My, Mike Williams is still working his way back. Garrett Wilson hasn't had his breakout game, nor has Brees Hall on the ground. Yet they still scored three touchdowns against the Tennessee Titans, one of the five best defenses in the entire NFL. They were still able to piece together a couple really impressive scoring drives against the San Francisco 49ers, scoring three touchdowns there as well, although I know one of those was Tyrod Taylor. The Jets, when they piece this all together and they are firing on all cylinders, they are going to be a deadly offense for defenses to face. Could you have said that before? Could you ask for anything else? No, no you can't. It's four down time and it is presented by Monmouth University. Explore further at monmouth.edu slash amplified. So pumped to have uh, my alma mater back as a sponsor for this segment moving forward for this season. Uh, you guys know how this works by now, right? It's four topics on the Jets, my thoughts on those topics, and it starts right now with first down. Left hand up, I might have been guilty of this. Uh, underestimating the New England Patriots, new coach Gerard Mayo, uh, Jacoby Brissett at quarterback. I mean, I looked at this team and saw one of the two or three worst in the entire NFL. I mean, they don't really have playmakers. They have a very bad defense. They don't have a great offensive line and a journeyman at quarterback. Doesn't matter because it seems like New England's going to be the team that actually was very similar to the Giants a couple years ago that knows they're not all that good, don't really care, want to play the ugly game, drag you out to the deep end and see if you can swim and survive in the deep end and those deadly scenarios. They were able to do that in the opener when they pulled off a victory, nearly did it against a very talented Seattle Seahawks team this past weekend. Now it's the Jets in prime time on Thursday night at MetLife Stadium. The Jets are a substantially better team on both sides of the ball, all three if you want to loop in special teams as well. They cannot take New England lightly. If they sleepwalk into this game, just assume they're going to win by two or three touchdowns, the Patriots could bite them and steal this victory. The Jets need to take them seriously and put them away when they get the chance. Concern is a little strong, but there were some questions that the Jets had uh, on just what they were going to get from Mike Williams this year. That's understandable. He was coming off a very bad knee injury that cost him all of training camp or virtually all of training camp. Uh, and for a player who's made an entire career on being a physical specimen, when some of that physicality and athleticism wanes as he gets older and deals with some injuries, can he still be the same guy? He is still on a limited snap count. The Jets are not unleashing him yet, but you saw on that catch that he made on second and 16 to really help the Jets beat the Tennessee Titans a week ago, what he is still capable of. The Jets are looking for a compliment outside Garrett Wilson in the passing game. It's still gonna be an offense focused on the run game. We'll get to that in a second, but they wanna have another weapon opposite Wilson. They have that with Williams. Alan Lazard as a three or four, Tyler Conklin working in there as a weapon as tight end. These Jets playmakers are starting to take shape and a big reason for that is we are now seeing that Williams is still capable of doing what he did for so many years with the Chargers. Every now and then you have a player that turns heads. Braylon Allen was one of those players. He, he looked dominant in OTAs. He looked dominant in minicamp. He looked dominant in training camp without pads, dominant in training camp with pads, dominant in training camp against the joint practices the Jets had against other teams. And now in the regular season, you're all seeing what we saw throughout the summer. This guy isn't just a compliment 
to Brees Hall. He's not just a RB2. In fact, on probably 20 other teams, he's an RB1. He is a weapon, and the Jets are using him not just to take Hall off the field and throw him on like we've seen so many other times with this team. They're using them together. They're using them to exploit defenses. They have found a strength, and they are using it to their advantage, and that is one of the reasons why I am so hyped about this Jets offense moving forward, because they truly have two dynamic forces in the backfield, and they're only going to get better and better and better as this season rolls on. You're going to hear a lot this week about how the Jets have to go sign Hassan Reddick and give him whatever contract he wants because Jermaine Johnson is on the injured reserve uh, with that Achilles injury he suffered against the Titans. Unfortunately, I don't think that will make anything better because aside from Quinn and Williams and maybe Sauce Gardner, Jermaine Johnson was not only his defense's best player, but their most steady force. He's not Nick Bosa, he's not TJ Watt, but what he is is a player that does everything so well. He is a good pass rusher, he is good against the ground, he's a very good leader. He was a stabilizing force on a defensive line that's had some issues the first couple weeks against the ground. 130 yards last week, 180 uh, against the San Francisco 49ers. It's going to be a challenge for the Jets to replace him. It's gonna take all of the wit of Aaron Whitecott and their defensive line coach, Jeff Ulbrich, uh, their defensive coordinator, and Robert Sala, their head coach, to figure out how to mask this hole. Because one player, Reddick, McGregor, Watts, McKinley, they're not going to do what Jermaine Johnson could because Jermaine Johnson did so much so well. Is this a debilitating season ending injury? No, but it's absolutely something the Jets gonna have to find a way to patch because Johnson was one of their most important players. All right, here we go. New say. Wait, what? My own show is about to get hijacked. Oh boy, what's this gonna be? I'm your co-host Janae Coakley for a Jets Final Drive. Zach Rosenbot's joining me because we're taking over Jets class as special <laughs> guest instructors because you need an important lesson. Here's the deal, Connor. Nobody, nobody wants to see a rival video. Nobody. This is a good please, one. Please tell him. The, the one guy on Twitter tweeted at you and you're like, everybody's asking for it. I got to do it now. I've been getting these tweets for like three weeks now asking for, I'm getting back to the preseason it's, asking for our rivals they need. I'm notice, glad I gave notice you're, it to my kids. I notice you're pointing at the camera a lot again. You got to stop doing that too. Stop yeah, Brie yelled at me for that one. I will be better though. I'll bounce back. I'll bounce. Well, no, no, there's no bouncing back. Everything about this is cringe. Point, the walk, the coffee. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I want credit for the fit, which I picked out myself. I did this one all by myself too. Let's rate it right now, Zach, okay? On a scale to one to 10, 10 being the best, one being the worst. I'll give you a 2.5 on the outfit. Bree gets a 10. If Bree picked out, it was a 10. I'll give Connor credit for the outfit. It's a solid outfit. I'll give him a, I'll give him a <laughs> seven or an eight out of 10, but the vibe, the pointing, it gets a zero out of 10. It's disgusting and I'm embarrassed to be your friend. All right, so how do I do it better then? I mean, the best way to improve would be to not do it, but if we're if we're saying you're still, <laughs> still doing it, I think the key is it can look so staged. You have to try and be a little more natural and you gotta not not acknowledge the camera. Like be, if anything, be annoyed that the camera is following you. That's what the players do. They're, they don't like that you're, you're have the phone in their face and you're recording them as they walk in most of the time. So now I'd I like just, I, I inter interrupt you. I very much disagree with that because I, I can tweet okay, not all of highlights them. of players. I can Instagram highlights of players. You know, Fair, it gets no. shared on Instagram stories. The damn arrivals. Those are the ones that they everybody, like whether it's Avon, like yeah. I was a giant cave. On Malik, aside from Daniel, all of them, and you'll see the Jet players too. They immediately are back there in the locker room. They go, and this is a this is a true story. I'm not going to say the player because I, I don't want I don't want to throw him under the bus. Last year I was doing an arrival video, shot the arrival video, was about to tweet it out. He came out of the locker room and goes, "Don't post that one yet." Went back and then redid his arrival because he didn't like his walk. So I don't want to hear the players don't like the hammer in their face for this. This is the one time they do. They love the arrivals. Uh, you know what? I, I was unfair about your outfit. You do dress very nicely. I mean, Brie dresses you better, I'll be honest with you. Yes. She does. Um, yeah. She does. But your, your suit was nice. I will give you that. We're all rusty. We talked about the Jets offense being rusty. Their defense very rusty. I think here, I think I was just a little uh, a little rusty. We'll be back. And you need to show me at least five people that wanted this back. At least five tweets. And they can't be related to you. 
Uh, that's fine. I'll look it up. I'll, I will look okay. up the. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll just do a Twitter. Just do a Twitter search. I'm the only one who calls it arrival. You need because I've I've been asked it. The last couple of weeks I've been asked where's the arrival we need. And I was like, oh, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm doing it. And then that one I was finally like, you know what? I felt the outfit a little bit. I felt pretty good. Mm-hmm. Liked it. I was like, you know, let's do it. Thank you guys so much for joining another episode of Jets Class. It's a blast having you along for the ride, as always. If you want to catch all previous episodes of Jets Class, you can do that across SMY's digital platforms. That is SMY.TV. That's on Facebook uh, and X, and of course on YouTube. If you're going to watch us on YouTube, make sure you give us a little like and subscribe. Just helps spread us to other Jet fans. If you want more of me and the rest of the Jets pregame live crew, you can find us before the Jets take on the Patriots on Thursday night. That is on SNY at 7 p.m. It's Jets pregame live. You'll have me, Janae, Connor Rogers, Bart Scott, Willie Colon, and Steve Gelbs all there for the ride. Uh, We look forward to seeing you guys on Thursday night.